Hi and welcome to some tips on painting in color. Hi, my name is Luis Escobar. I'm a storyboard artist on the Simpsons television show. I've been working on the show for over 25 years now and I'm here to empower you. So uh, I've been rummaging through my archives of, <clears throat> of um, past coaching uh, videos that, to see if I've done any demos uh, that that be useful for uh, to share in YouTube audience and so I've found this video which I've edited and cut down into it's just the demo and uh, it's about painting in color so what I actually do in this video is I take a portrait a black and white model and then I I, I color it uh, and then I paint it uh, but in color and I do a really quick demo of the theory that I use when doing that which is basically trying to to layer colors and to add values through the colors and what um, what I discovered is that uh, in this video I, I, I discover a way to paint digitally that is almost one-to-one -to, -one, uh, to the technique that I use in watercolor and um, and I've forgotten completely that that was something that I've discovered and I haven't ever used it since. So now that I've seen this video, I got reminded that I have done this thing. And now I want to try it because I forgot that I even discovered this thing while doing this demo, which is really a nice surprise, actually. And I want to share it with you because I think it might be helpful to you. But also, the, again, I, I share the theory behind why and how I think when I'm doing uh, my watercolors and, and how I approach them and then you can see how I actually are I'm able to do it digitally as well which is nice so uh, I, th I again I think this is gonna be helpful and um, here you go uh, this is gonna be quick um, so I really quickly kind of map out what I'm going to to draw right um, and in the um, in the process, I then I can't be worrying about being perfect here. I just need to do another a quick explanation. So I'm drawing my my figures. Um, sometimes what I do is then I, I, I kind of work out um, where the the light is going to be. Um, that sort of thing. Sometimes I don't. It depends on the complexity of of the um, of the drawing. So let's say that was. Uh, a very refined drawing because I because I'm very very careful when I'm drawing my initial drawing um, to get what I want the drawing to look like like I, I'm very 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 careful and it takes me longer than what I just did but this isn't about being perfect and this is just about showing you the process and then I probably, this isn't my color. Yeah, this is, this is the one I had. And then I go in and uh, I did it again because I did it fast. I think I know what to do this time. Boom. There, that fixed it. Okay. Then I, I take my brush and I very carefully pick out um, where is this the, this, this the wrong pencil. Where 
where I want the shadows to be and I with with the brown umber or the red umber and this should be redder I don't know why this isn't more red it looks red doesn't it look red it looks red to me but um And, and the reason why I, I choose red is because, um, especially because of, of, of where I'm, I'm, I tend to draw people, uh, red uh, feels more natural as a dark. So um, I could always go and, and add a little bit of blue and make this much blacker but notice that this is no different than um, what we've been doing what happened oh did, uh, it's my keyboard There we go. This is no different than, but this is wh what I tend. This is what I tend to do with, with the watercolor. I literally do this with the watercolor. And I map out where I'm going. Okay. So then, oh, and that's that's really sloppy. I, I'm usually not too sloppy. That's what I used to do, by the way. This is what I used to do. And then I would go in and start adding the color. And the water, the thing, the great thing about watercolor is that you could layer it, and um, and that was really really helpful, uh, knowing that knowing that you could layer the watercolor, and so knowing that um, that uh, from the chart that local colors tend to be, especially with with uh, with human beings tend to be around right here the local colors that's why in black and white uh, it helps so that you know around what what level of of, um, of value um, it, it is the skin tone right um, then I go in and I I'd um, I'd paint um, uh, go in here and go mm, okay I'll just pick out this and I would mix a color and I would just I, I would hit certain areas and um, I'd be very careful I, I, I'm not being careful here but for example I'd be very careful to leave some white and I, I tend to use white gouache, uh, which means that um, if I really blow it, or I screw up, or I don't even, or or, or I decide I'm not going to use the white of the paper, I can, I don't have to. Okay, so, but if I do want to leave the white of the paper, I got to be careful, and um, and just to paint around the areas that I need the light to to go and to be so and that takes a little bit more practice but then I would go in here and I would and I would add the color in here too and and um, and that would that would kind of 
um, give me, you know, like, and it would be a light layer. It would be a layer about like that, like very light at first. And then as I, um, as I look where it needs to be a little bit darker, I just add a little bit of the darker in it. And um, and it'd be very I'd be very very careful about that. And watercolor tends to be uh, I'm going around stop it. And watercolor tends to be f pretty forgiving. You could you could add water and then and um, paper towel some if you some of the paint off if you if you overdo it. And then I'd be like, okay, well, I want the values to be a little bit darker here now. And then, so, um, say that that's a, uh, I, I would, I would go in, I would go in and, like I said, this is a, this is, with water color, it could be transparent. So I would add a little bit of, a little bit of red here. Just a touch of blue down here. And um, and then I'd be like, okay, now I need to make this a little bit darker. So that's when I would come in and I would go to my um, ultramarine blue. And at first I'd be very careful and um, and start hitting some of the areas that are a little bit darker and those places would start turning a little bit darker and a little bit bluer and it'll be a little bit more interesting because now I'm putting in some of the cool colors on top of the warm and it's starting to look a lot more interesting And then I'd be like, oh, okay, that's cool. It's looking cool, but um, I think I'm losing some of that. I don't want it to, to look too blue. So I come back to my... And they'd, they'd mix. And it'd get darker together. And I'd start getting making a black out of the two colors. And um, I think this needs a little bit more ultramarine in here. And so notice that the values that we were using all correspond to this sort of thing, where I'm adding this value on, and these values together to make to make the the values work and it's all um, still thinking about the um, the value scale and and um, but I'm but I built the color that I but I built I'm building these colors with in the context of um, starting off with just one value. Then I added the local colors. Then I started kind of adding a little bit more modeling on top of that. And then I added, to make it darker, I doubled up on the painting, on the color. Um, with watercolor, it's, it's great because you could layer.
like that and they and it mixes really well um, with the this digital it's not quite doing it it's not quite coming together the in a, in a it's not mixing the way that it it should I guess uh, I don't know how to do it like multiply would do it maybe would be the the equivalent um, where the two colors are, are are combining a little bit more um, but, but I'm not even sure if that's the case let me see multiply on everything So I, I did add multiply on all of this stuff, and I think I think that might be what the the, the way to to make it seem like that. Um, nowadays, I take a different approach. Um, so this is the way I started uh, to get my to wrap my head around what I'm what I was going to do, how I'm going to do it, and all that other stuff. Um, uh, and, and and I learned how to how to handle um, the colors that way, and and I did it by doing same. It's it's basically the same as doing a black and white value study. You take the same process, except this time you're doing the colors, right? Um, so uh because so so uh, uh you take this and then you try to match the values and the colors but with the uh, when you have the color um obviously this is not in color this is black and white and i'm making up the colors but um but that's the gist that's kind of the the idea that that um that you're that uh, that you're working with is is is, is just in you, you you do a color study from a color photograph, um, but you're trying to get the values right, as, as, along with the colors. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, and and if it helps to start with this. And then start adding the local colors very lightly and then start modeling them a little bit more and then adding darker values to start making it pop and start creating the contrast then that's the best thing that you can do um, I'm going to add a little bit more uh, I'm gonna put this in multiply and I'm going to add a little bit more ultramarine and this yeah this is fe this feels a lot more that f this feels much closer to what watercolor does is it mixes like this and um, and, it, and it actually gets darker yeah so that's actually very very much like what watercolor tends to do it it um, it just combines and it and it becomes blacker it doesn't like become opaque okay so speaking of opaque and this is something that I haven't done but um, having worked with having done enough studies uh, and see notice how this is it's it's too like 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 this is too blue right and then I want to let's say I want to make this blacker I would actually take put this in multiply I would actually take the the red umber and then put it on here like that and this is exactly what oh my gosh this is just like watercolor that's what it does it does that it just makes it blacker when you just add um, the brown umber on top of the on top of the ultramarine it's exactly like that it's just huh this is very interesting just trying to t t teach you how to do this or talk about this it, it um it's showing me how these layers kind of work um 
and how they can mimic um, real life tools. So if you, I guess, if you get used to using multiply and adding layers like this, um, you could, you, it's like practicing watercolor. Okay, so um, uh, except, except of course that the watercolor you have to dip and you have to make sure how much water you got in relation to the pigment and all this other stuff. So there's other elements to it, but this is pretty, pretty close. Okay, so um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, so the, the new process that I use. In the new process that I use, what I tend to do, and I'm going to grab this, put this all in a folder, goodbye, is, I'll just type line here. Nowadays I I would take the I would I would um I the pencil drawing is um ma I map out all the shadow shapes. Uh very similar to what we've been doing. I would go in here and I would put in the cast shadow. I would go, okay, I am going to take this here, this shape here, and this shape here, and I would do this and this, and I would go over here like this, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to do that with it, and this is going to be a shadow here, and I'm going to put a shadow right here, and this shape like this. Etc. Okay, so this is bit, this, it's a little bit more mapped out. It's a little bit more mapped out. As before, um, I would I would kind of play it by ear with the um, with the watercolor. This time I, I do this, and then what I do is I come in here and I take the um, my brush and I just put in the water the the, the local colors. Actually, no, no, that's not. No, what I do is I I go in and I um. Yeah, the local colors. Yep, and I do this. Um. And I just start putting in a bunch of things. La -di -da -di -da. And I just make a big mess. Actually, I'm much more controlled about it. So let me redo that. See, I can't do it with this. I can't do it in here. Like, I wet the canvas. I wet it, wet it, wet it, wet it. And then the effect that I get is like this. Oh, and the lines. So like that. So I get an effect that looks a lot like this.
and it looks kind of a, oh whoops I messed up it's not on so th it's uh, it's underneath and then this is I put it on the wrong layer Ooh, that's not that's not what I like no that's not it either uh, the value should be about the same of these two colors and the idea is that I pick two different colors or two different um, I, I, I need a transition I need a I need a I, I don't want what I'm painting to all have one um, so this is the idea is that I'm changing that 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 is change that the transition of, of of just local values are going to be uh, different and, and 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 I choose I tend to choose these two colors most of the time just because I think they're pretty but um and and they're not even natural they don't they're not even like the it doesn't feel natural it's not even the, the real local color or whatever it is okay so now that I've got that and I know that I'm where I know that this is going to be the local color then I go in and this is when I either I, I go back to the old formula I go back to the okay let's start darkening things up and that's when I just and I follow my 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 lines and I just paint in within the lines the way I had it So I'm doing this very sloppy, and then um, and then I take actually I shouldn't have done that. I should have done multiply. And then done that. Do this very quick. I don't want to. I don't want to spend too much more time doing this because I think um, you'll get the idea. But I do. I. I, I am being. I, I. I tend to be very careful about it because I'm following my very carefully placed line work. And I come in here and I do what I what needs to be done with some um, with the form shadows whatever it is that needs to be done I'm making it up here then wherever I need it to be a little bit darker oh and then I, I come in here and do the the blush don't 
Then I get my ultramarine. And I start finding the darkest darks. Really finessing these blacks. wherever the blacks need to be finessed. And then I come in with uh, white gouache. And pop in some lights. And that's the approach I tend to take with color. And this doesn't have to be ultramarine and brown umber. It could also, you could also put in some purple in here. You could just mix purple and just have it be purple. But I think it's too late to add the purple in here. But but the the idea is that if it's purple, um, the purple that you're adding is is the value that you need it to be. Uh, because the, the if it's if it's too light it's not going to be the right value it needs to be dark purple like almost black purple you know that sort of thing so um and the color sometimes doesn't matter as long as the values are there okay and so that's my uh my two cents on color and the approach that i take to color and and this is this is kind of, this is the method I use in, in when I'm doing my watercolors.